In today's video, I am going to talk to you about the five steps to take when forming a medical corporation. Hi, my name is Andrew. I'm the managing attorney here at Malai Law, where we help entrepreneurs just like you start your businesses without having to deal with the complicated legal forms. I've done a few services back by over 2,800 plus five-star Google reviews, and we can help you start your business too. The purpose of these videos are to provide you with as much guidance and clarity in the beginning stages of starting a business. So if you haven't already, please make sure you hit the like, subscribe, as well as the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. Before you do anything, make sure you speak with a professional. Now with that aside, let's go ahead and talk about the five steps to forming a medical corporation. The first step you're going to want to take is you're going to want to develop the correct mindset. When starting a business, it's very important to have your mindset right. Do you believe in yourself? Do you believe that you have what it takes in order to start your own business? If so, starting a medical corporation may be for you. In addition to developing the right self-belief mindset when starting a business, you also have to figure out what type of niche you're going to go into. In other words, what type of medical services do you plan to provide and administer? Do you plan to do incubation? Do you plan to provide some sort of diagnosis treatments? Do you plan to facilitate the administration of certain medicines? Find the niche, develop the mindset, and start taking action. Ask yourself, what do you want to do? How do you want to be able to use your medical license in order to help others? The second step you're going to want to take is you're going to want to find help. Starting a business is not easy. Starting a medical business is not easy. But there are people in your life that are willing to help. So reach out to them. They can be your partner, your wife, whomever is willing to help, ask. You will not receive until you ask. You will never receive until you reach out. So make sure you take that step. You'd be surprised how many people would support you in your endeavors to start your own medical practice. Now let's go ahead and talk about the third step. The third step is one of the more exciting parts. You have to be able to finalize a company name. You have to be able to confirm the business address that you will be using. Will you be working from home? Will you be working at a physical brick and mortar? These questions, asking yourself these questions are very important prior to actually registering any sort of business. What I mean by this is a company name can either attract clients or it can dissuade customers or clients or patients from wanting to work with you. Once you finalize your company name as well as your business address, you're then going to want to submit the articles of incorporation with the Secretary of State. Now, it's important to be advised that there is a specific form that you must file and the specific state that I'm talking about here is California. So the specific form is a professional corporation articles of incorporation. It's a $100 filing fee. And once you submit the fee, the Secretary of State of California takes approximately four to six weeks to then send you your company documents. Additionally, you should also be aware of something called the Franchise Tax Board Fee. The Franchise Tax Board Fee is a $800 maintenance fee that is paid directly to the California Board the California Franchise Tax Board. This is probably one of the more important notes. If you're a MD and you're looking to start your own practice, you're not able to open your typical LLC, your typical S corporation, or even your typical corporation. California requires MDs to form what's called a professional medical corporation. Once you receive your company documents from the Secretary of State, you're then going to want to apply for your EIN number. You're going to want to draft what's called your internal bylaws, which is an internal legal document that reflects your ownership in the business as well as your responsibilities and duties. And then of course, you're going to want to open some sort of business bank account and apply for a business license in the county where you plan to provide and administer your services. The fourth step you're going to want to take is you're going to want to search for malpractice insurance. Now, keep in mind that there are certain limitations when it comes to malpractice insurance. You have $1 million limits, you have $3 million limits. You're going to want to choose a limit that's right for you. There are different malpractice insurance providers out there, so make sure you reach out to the proper provider that will best suit your needs. Some of them have a monthly fee, while others have a quarterly fee. 
so reach out to the right malpractice insurance provider. If you're not too familiar with malpractice insurance, then it's likely that your hospital or your employer is currently providing you and covering malpractice insurance for you. Now the fifth step you're going to want to take is you're going to want to make sure you're properly credentialed. What I mean by this is if you decide that you want to be able to work for an insurance provider like Medicare, in this case Medicare has certain requirements that must be met. However, once you meet those requirements, you'll be able to take on tasks given to you by Medicare. Depending on the hours, the amount of patients that you see, you'll then be able to run your entire business, make some income, and be your own boss. But the bottom line is you're going to want to make sure that once your professional corporation is fully set up that you get credentialed as soon as possible, especially if working or providing services given to you by Medicare or other insurance providers is something that's within your business plan. If you happen to have any questions about anything that I talked about in today's video, make sure you click the link in the description box below to book your free call with a professional who can help you better understand how to start your own medical practice. If you happen to enjoy this video, please make sure you hit the like, subscribe, as well as the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos.